What's up, Rangers? It's me, Zordon. You can see my whole body because... Moving on. So do you want to learn how to do visual effects like this and this? <sighs> Probably better than that. Well, we have a friend of ours who does visual effects professionally and does it as a freelancer for a lot of YouTube channels. His name is Seth Film, and he's going to teach us a little bit about what it takes to be a freelancer and work with VFX clients. But to find out what it takes, why don't you give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Seth. I go by Seth Films on YouTube. I'm a freelance video editor and visual effects artist. I've worked on channels like Super Unknown Person and Unworthy Productions. Being a freelance video editor is like the weirdest thing for one to tell people that you do. When you tell people, oh, I'm a freelance vi video editor, they're like, oh, like, you work in the movies? I'm like, well, no, just think a little bit smaller. Oh, like, uh, TV show? I'm like, no, just a little bit small. I'm like on, on the internet. It's like, oh, you must work with like Jake Paul. And like, no, uh, I do uh, visual effects. Primarily, I'm known for doing Power Ranger visual effects. The weird parts of doing being a freelancer is knowing your worth, definitely, and just communication which is like the biggest thing when it comes to being a freelance anything. When you're a freelance artist and you're communicating with different people in your project, it's very important to not only have extreme open communication with them, to know what times you should text each other. Having a set time to communicate with your client is very important because you don't wanna be abused and be like, he's gonna call me at like 12 in the morning. I'm not even like anywhere near my computer. I'm trying to sleep. Letting them know your capabilities and like what you expect from them and they should tell you what they expect of you as well. Having them to explain to you like what they, they their vision is so you can do the best of your job because your job is to make sure their project looks good and is presentable for them. It isn't just about your creative needs, which is something that like I've had to definitely get over my ego with because like sometimes you just you want it to be done a certain way, but like that's not what the client wants. That's just what your artistic mind want. Also, again, knowing what like knowing what you want from them. So, for example, if somebody is coming to you with a video and like say for example, it's not up to like especially for visual effects, it needs to be shot in a very specific way or in a very clean way so you can do your visual effects. And if it's not done to that caliber that you need it to be, then you need to let your client know like even beforehand, even before if you know you're doing visual effects for this person and they're they haven't even started production yet, make sure they know like what kind of shot that you need to do visual effects. Make sure they know, hey, you can't be like shaking the camera too much. You can't just have like unmotivated movements when it comes to the camera because it could make or break your visual effect. I've had clients before who have given me honestly the worst footage I've ever seen. <laughs> I've actually had to tell them, I'm like, listen, like this video can't be safe. It's an unfortunate side effect of having people who don't know how how to do visual effects, make a video for a visual effects artist that they don't know how to properly set up a camera or have proper movements or proper direction for a visual effects video. And you'll have to tell them like, hey, either you need to reshoot this or it can't be done and we need to rethink the project in general. So in another project that I had to edit, they were battling sunlight and when obviously like light goes down, you need to adjust your camera settings. So what you could either do is use ISO the best way to describe ISO is an artificial way of getting light, which is just boosting the sensitivity to your sensor. If you raise the ISO in camera, then you introduce like a whole bunch of grain and noise. It's a bunch of digital noise. Or the worst way to do it, especially when, you're, when your aperture is all the way open, is to crank the shutter speed down. And then that causes like a whole bunch of motion blur that doesn't look good and it also makes everything look super jittery and that's not good for the video either. Unfortunately, he did both. And so you had like just like terrible footage that you really couldn't do any visual effects to. So what I had to do was take all the footage that was actually shot in daylight and that looked really good. Luckily, the last shot filmed during sunset was a good ending point for the video that kind of left a cliffhanger to it. A thing that you can do with, especially in the edit, is rework your project completely. The movie's written like three times by the script writers while shooting and then it's rewritten while editing. You can completely change a movie's meaning in editing. You shouldn't, but you definitely can fix things during post instead of like being on set and like, we'll fix it in post. 
but you can definitely fix problems in post. The videos that like I won't take are videos that the shutter speed is like way off. If it's too slow of a shutter speed, it causes too much motion blur. The visual effects will be lost and the amount of smear that happens with motion blur, the visual effects will definitely stand out more because it won't match the footage as much. If I was to make recommendations, if you want to send visual effects to a client, I would recommend doing the video outside because it's the easiest way of getting good quality video. I would recommend not going into auto settings if you're shooting for somebody to do visual effects later, because if you go into auto mode, it will compensate the shutter speed. It could introduce more noise with the ISO going up and down. And overall, it'll be kind of a nightmare because visual effects have to match the footage. A good visual effects matches the footage, bad visual effects stand out to you. And having uncontrolled footage makes it hard to match that footage with visual effects. Probably one of the best things to know for visual effects, your focal length, because a lot of visual effects aren't shot with the proper focal length. So you'll have to know like how to compensate for that. And especially with a lot of 3D stuff, you'll need to know the focal length of the camera and the sensor size, especially, because those two go hand in hand. Having the camera stable, having it like, move fluidly in like any direction without like too much camera jitter or unnecessary movement is really important to have for visual effects shots. Make sure your lighting is like consistent. If you decide to have an explosion when the sun's changing positions, like the color and the brightness of the explosion will change drastically. You wanna make it as easy as possible for the visual effects artist to do their job. And then also kind of knowing the lighting of the area, which you can tell through the footage, but just making sure that like, hey, where was the light coming from in this particular shot? Asking, again, keeping an open communication with your client and like, asking them these questions is very important to the whole visual effects process and being a freelancer in general. Another way to be a freelancer is to send update reports and being able to send unfinished versions, render them at like 480p or something, and then send them to your client. Having notes for visual effects and like any kind of project that you're doing is really important. I work for a production company called Unworthy Productions. Unworthy Productions makes a fan series called Power Rangers Unworthy that has a lot of spectacle and visuals and stuff like that. I personally do the sound design. Sometimes because of just production issues, we need to get a video out like really fast. So I'll need to do the sound design before visual effects are even done. When you need like a giant energy ball being flung at another person, I can't see that. Does it have electricity in it? So I need to add like a little electricity effects or like, is it Dragon Ball Z? where it's just like a ball of energy. So it just needs that build up. The hard part is like not having visuals for like that kind of stuff. Knowing the tone of the video, also extremely important when you're doing sound design. If it's a really quiet moment, you don't want blaring sound effects to happen. Like if two characters are talking to each other, it's a really like touching moment. You don't want to hear every sound of their clothing wisping, but for an action scene, you want to hear your clothes move or leaves blowing or like things like that. Like subtle things go a long way. So a question that a lot of people ask is whether you should get uh, visual effects or sound libraries or to do it all of it yourself. You kind of have to do both. Like when I first started out, uh, I honestly made everything myself because I couldn't afford visual effects packs or like sound design packs. There's a lot now that are free. Like you can go like production crate has a lot of free visual effects and even sound design stuff. I call them uh, film riot light. There's a lot of times where production crate will release something that film riot released three months ago and they decided to just happen to release the free version. But yeah, there's a lot of like a libraries that are free. You lose out on certain qualities in those free packs. And then if you're making them yourself for specifically sound design, it's really easy to do. Just grab like clothes or grab like random stuff. Like if you ever watch like a Foley artist do their work, they have the craziest stuff. So honestly, just take random stuff from your house and just start recording them and then start mixing them together. And then you can make like some crazy sound effects. I had to do an ax effect for Unworthy Productions. It's being swung everywhere. And then like it's being dragged on the ground. So I literally took a cast iron skillet and a knife and then just started like messing around with that, trying to get like the right sounds and then like getting like a PVC pipe. PVC pipes are your friends, man, when it comes to sound design. You can get so many sounds from a PVC pipe that you can get for like a dollar at like your local hardware store. Little Timmy, just like go lawn mowing for like a day and you'll have enough to make the best sound design library ever. Celery, 
Celery's great. You put celery in the freezer and then you can break it, hit it with stuff. Just take your, take your anger <laughs> take out. Take your anger out, dude, who cares? Just don't make any grunts with it because it'll ruin the sound, guys. To get started in doing freelance work and doing like visual effects or sound design, honestly, the best way to start out is to show off your work. So by just like shooting stuff yourself and showing that like, hey, look, I can make an explosion or I can do this lightsaber effect. Being able to show your work is the number one priority because you can say all these things that you can do, but if you don't show it, unfortunately, the client either won't believe you or they will ask you to do more than you are clearly capable of. Doing it independently, and then just like going out to people and asking if they need help. Like uh, there's a lot of YouTubers who will ask for editors or I've even like for a lot of my clients, I've gone out and said like, hey, I, I asked them questions like, okay, like who's doing your sound design? Who's doing your VFX work and such and such. They've all said to me like, oh, like we do it independently. Like I do it personally. I will normally say like, hey, I can help with that. Like again, just like asking people if they need help or like asking like if they would be willing to hire you, even if it's not for much at first, but then like as you both grow, then the price obviously you're getting paid grows with it. Like that's important. Having a good client freelancer relationship is very important too. For one, knowing the line between being a client and being friends and also knowing the line of like what's going too far on each end. For programs that I use personally, I use the Adobe Creative Suite. So I'll use Premiere, I use After Effects, I use Audition. I will always preach HitFilm Express as a free visual effects program. DaVinci Resolve, again, free software that literally professionals use. Unlike Premiere, you only have to pay for it once. And if you decide to get any Blackmagic product, you get it for free. <laughs> Another cheap software, Sony Vegas, I'll always recommend because it's very streamlined and it's very like, I, again, I'd like to say it's like Adobe Lite. Like it has everything that you need in it, but none of the benefits. So for visual effects in After Effects, I'd always recommend getting, honestly, a majority of the video co-pilot stuff. Getting things like Sabers. Their free program, Sabers, is really good for even like graphic design and doing like really unique kind of like energy effects. And especially if you wanna do energy effects on a budget, getting Sabers is a must because you can make really cool looking energy effects for free. I will always praise the Lord Red Giant's particular suite. That's always a good software. And especially now with its update using Fluid Sim, it's an incredible software to use. Adobe has like a lot of great plugins on its own. Like I will always use Fractal Noise as uh, an effect because it's so versatile and useful. Element 3D I use a lot because I don't know 3D programs that well. Being able to use Element 3D and just like having all 3D stuff done in After Effects is amazing. It takes forever to render, but it's faster than Blender when you're, uh... <laughs> what did you say? it's faster than Blender, especially when you're trying to get th things done in a peach and a pinch. And a and a peach. <laughs> Effects packs that I would recommend. Some stuff from Film Riot, like their Ignite pack is a great tool to use. Video Copilot's Action Essentials, honestly still isn't essential for most people. Even though like those effects have been like done to death, like everybody has those. Go on YouTube and look up visual effects videos. Everybody has an Action Essentials explosion on it. For free stuff or even like stuff on the cheap, go with uh, Production Crate. Despite what I said earlier, they do have a lot of like really cool visual effects and like I've used Use them a lot in videos. The hardest part about that is like, it doesn't entirely matter. What matters is time. You can make a very like intricate visual effects piece, but it's going to take time that your computer is going to need. So if you have the money and the budget, a lot of RAM, a really good CPU, the GPU doesn't matter as much, especially with the Adobe suite, but having one is a very good plus to have. But you can really get away with anything as long as you know the limitations of your device. Like say for instance, you have just like a consumer computer or like even like a gaming computer, but it's not like super high spec. You can get like really good visual effects, but you're gonna have to like render each layer individually and then add them all back in and then render it out. So it's not as super intensive as a process, but it will take longer for you to 
render out visual effects like that. So if you guys uh, want to get in touch with me for visual effects, if you guys want to see the stuff that I'm working on, you can uh, see a bunch of stuff that I've been working on on Instagram at Seth Films. Find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash Seth Films. I have my DMs open. You can message me. I will look at them if they're a request. If it's just saying like, hi, I probably won't answer it. I'm not gonna lie to you. But yeah, if you have any questions, I'm very open to like answering any questions. If you have any in my comment section on YouTube, check me out, youtube.com slash C slash Seth Films. I'll just leave. Uh, I'm gonna fall out of frame. And that's, that's how I end my videos. Whew. Well, thanks for that, Seth. I think we all learned a lot of valuable stuff about working with clients and being a visual effects artist. Number one, communication is key. You need to know what your worth is and what the client wants from you. And make sure that you're delivering exactly what they're looking for. And if they don't really know, you're working with them to deliver something that they're going to enjoy. And sometimes that means to give them temporary visuals, like something that's in 480p, that they can then look at and see if that's what they want. And another thing is not being afraid to use some assets you downloaded. When you get started, you might wanna make everything yourself, but as you grow more and more, it's easier to grab some visuals and put them together to make something unique. And like Seth said, basically everybody doing action visuals is using the Video Copilot Action Essentials Pack. So there's no problem with using stuff that you find online. Just make sure to give credit where credit's due. And like Seth said, you don't need to have the most amazing computer to do some visual effects but you need to make sure that you're willing to put in the time to not only do the effect, but then let it render. And the better computer you have, the quicker it'll go, but you can make anything work. And I'll tell you, it is completely worth it. Making a visual effect just feels so amazing to complete. And if you're working with a VFX artist, it's really important to know how to deliver the footage to them so that they can make the visual effects. Seth gave us a lot of really good tips about how to deliver footage to him, but your VFX artist might want something different. So make sure you're communicating really well with them so they have exactly what they need to make the best product. And on that note, that'll do it for if on that note, thank you so much for watching and we want to send a huge thank you to Seth from Seth Films. It's super awesome talking to him about cameras and visual effects and it is always a pleasure to hang out with our boy. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. And go give Seth a subscribe and a subscribe on Instagram. He needs it. Doesn't have too many on there. Subscribe to someone on Instagram? <laughs> subscribe to his Instagram. Subscribe to his uh, OnlyFans on Instagram. And as Zordon says to the Power Rangers, make it so, number one. Light speed to Endor.